All right, in the last video, we got the 4L80 actually mounted in Goldie Hawn. We were able to reuse the stock cross member, just had to cut the mount off and flip it around to the back, and then use a little piece of angle iron to space it. Looks good, fits good. Now we can move on to the next thing, which is the wiring. I was gonna go with like a conversion harness from like Nelson Performance, but it should be simple enough that I'm just gonna tackle it. On this round transmission connector, you just have to remove two wires and then switch one to another section of one of the wires you removed. And then the two that you took off, uh, connect those to a speed sensor plug, much like this one, because the 4L80s have two speed sensors, the 4L60s only have one. And then those wires you'll find up in the actual PCM pinout, and you'll move those two, and that's it. Uh, bolts and nuts. We had to space them. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think they were those. Wow. Yeah. So this is basically a free thing to do. You just need a another speed sensor uh, plug. You can buy these for like. 10 or so bucks at Amazon or Summit or Jegs or wherever you need to get them um, But then it makes it not free so if you want it to actually be free I don't recommend this but what you could do is just go to a junkyard cut one of these off pocket it and walk out Don't do that, but if you want it to be actually free That's how it would actually be free. So these plugs are exactly the same side from this one has a broken little uh, tab there But I'll just zip tie it and make sure it doesn't come out and then, like I said, it's just two wires. Just have to solder them together or use a crimp connector, whatever your style is. I'm probably going to go with soldering and then uh, some heat shrink. So, let's get to work. All right, so to get started, we're going to pull this case off so that we can see the wires and get to the back side of this plug and see the uh, coating on it. And this is a relatively simple thing. Just got to pop that off. And then this whole piece comes off the loom there. And then there's... A little tab here on each side that is a little bit of a, a butt. Ow. We got that side. Now we just have to get over here. There it goes. Now try not to break that cover. You don't need it, need it, but it's a whole lot better to have it. And then to pop this face off so that we can actually get the wires out. Just need to get under the lip of it. Might be easier to use like a razor blade. There we go. And that pops right off, hits me in the face. Now you can see each of the terminals in here. If you move it over like that, there's a tab that holds it in. You can physically push the wire from the backside to take pressure off that tab, pop it out, and then the whole wire slides out. And then it's a little dirty here, but you can clean this up and there's actually like a letter designation for each one of these like for instance I think the bottom row is T through U something like that and then try and clean it up a little bit so it's easier to see now right here's the three wires that we're dealing with on this plug this white wire in location S this brown wire in U <laughs> and then this uh, tan and black wire in T the white wire and the tan and black wire we're removing and then this brown wire we're moving to the slot right here where the white wire is. Now let me just pull this back a little bit so we have a little bit more slack. So this white one here is the first one we're gonna deal with. Got a hold of it and then we'll just push it up and we'll go in there with a flat blade and just try to pry that little tab out of the way, which is a whole lot easier to do when you're not looking through a camera. There we go. There's the white wire. That one's out of the way. Then once you have all the wires out, you just have to move the brown wire from where it was down here to where the white wire was up here, which is just pushing it in like that. Should take some sort of silicone to seal this up just to be extra safe. And then we'll keep these ones out of the way for the speed sensor. And we can put this plug back together. All right, now that we got the transmission plug done and all back together, we can move on to these two wires, which like I said, are going to be for the vehicle speed sensor. Splice this connector into it. Actually, I'm gonna solder here because these ends fit perfectly. If I can get it lined up, kind of like a needle in a eye sort of thing. These wires actually fit perfectly into the ends of those pinout connectors. So I'm just gonna solder them together and then slide the heat shrink down 
and heat shrink it all together. This is going to be plenty long enough because it's only like six or seven inches in front of the other connector. So this is going to be the last thing we have to do under here and then we can move to the PCM connectors up top. And just like that, we're done with all the wiring under the truck. I did put this little uh, shield on it just to make it look nicer because gross wiring is one of the few things in this world I genuinely hate. So just cleaned it up a whole lot and uh, taped it together up here just so that it stays separated and where it needs to be. So now all that's left is just the repinning up top and then we are done. All right, now that we're up top and we can actually see the ECU and the connectors for it, we can repurpose those wires that we used for the speed sensor, the white one and the black and tan one. Now we'll start with the white wire and that is pin number 79 on the C1 connector, the blue one, and we need to move it to pin number 22 on the red or green connector depending on your year. It'll be the same process regardless. And then for the black and tan wire, that'll be already on the C2 connector and we need to move it from pin 42 to pin 23. Uh, still on that C2, the red or green connector. Just one quarter inch bolt, unscrew that, and the connectors just unplug. I had to take the computer out because I had a brake line right here that was replaced that was blocking this red plug from coming all the way out. Um, and then once you have them unplugged, you can just wiggle them both up here to get better access to them. Just like that, everything is back together and wired up. Can't even tell anybody was in here aside from the relays for the electric fans. So that's all the wiring there is for a 4L60 to 4L80E swap, at least on a two-wheel drive. Everything I did was just step-by-step -step following the instructions on lt1swap.com. I'll post the link down below. But that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope it helps you guys out. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. We'll see you next time.